This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. The Advantages of Using Per Unit Systems in Power System Calculations Part 2A Topic 2 is all about why we use per units in power system analysis. Now this is the first part of the series on answering this question. However, we have introduced per unit systems in the previous series and discuss how we derive them. In this series, we will demonstrate the significance of using per unit systems in power system calculations. Now, per unit systems are employed in power system analysis due to a number of reasons, but we will list some of them and describe them briefly below. The first reason is because of easy calculations and easy comparisons. When we are given two equipment to compare, say, two generators, and we have to choose one for our power systems, we have to compare it quantitatively and qualitatively, and using per unit systems can come in handy for the quantitative part. We use per unit values of systems to determine the generator's requirements and then decide which will be the best fit for a power system. This is described in more detail in part 2b. The second reason for using per unit systems is the transformers. Now for transformers we usually make its equivalent by referring to the low voltage side or the high voltage side. After that we calculate the different impedances. However, when we are using per unit values for impedances in the transformer, they remain the same for both the low voltage side and the high voltage side. And therefore, calculating one value of per unit impedance is enough and the lengthy process for the other can be omitted. A complete derivation of this has been done in part 2c of this series. The third reason is eliminating multiple voltage levels. Now when we are dealing with power systems that have different voltage levels in different areas of the network, we prefer to employ per unit calculations. Similar to what we did in part 1c of this series where we solved an example of a power system having two transformers that varied the voltage levels in three different regions. Now converting such system into a per unit equivalent simplifies the calculation relations and we will be looking at that in part 2D. The fourth reason is the elimination of the square root of 3. So it's obvious that by mentioning the square root of 3, we are talking about calculations involving three-phase systems and three-phase systems that are commonly connected as either Y or delta. We saw some formulas and derivations in part 1D of this series that showed how square root of 3 got cancelled out for three-phase calculations. And by doing so, those calculations became more simple. We'll be looking deeper into this in the upcoming video, part 2E. Now in this video, we discuss the advantages that per unit systems bring in to analyze a power system. And we refer to several other parts, part 2B, C, D, and E of this series that prove uh, some of those concepts. We hope that you have a continued interest in this topic and series as a student professional. We also hope that you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com and becoming our patron at patreon.com slash generalpack. Thank you.